Hello, everyone. My name is David Serna, and I am an instructional consultant here with the Center for the Advancement of Learning. Thank you so much for joining us today. This is our workshop called Blackboard Ultra, All You Need to Know About Tests. I'm also joined by my colleagues, Fatma and Julian, also from the Cal team. So let's go over some of our goals for today. Really, our session goal is digging deeper into Blackboard tests. So you may have those foundational skills, really how to create a test, but let's dive a little bit deeper on how to really make them effective with some tips and considerations. So we'll get to start with test options. We'll talk about creating a test, quiz, exam, and some best practices for when you use those in Blackboard. Next, we'll talk about grading with Julian King, our gradebook whiz. He will talk about checking and grading a test. He'll also go over question analysis. Finally, we'll end with the closing about next steps and we'll have some time for Q&A at the end for any questions that you may have throughout this presentation. So let's get started with the Zoom controls first. Number one in the lower left corner, if you do have a question or you want to say something, feel free to unmute. You can go ahead and click on that unmute icon in the lower left corner of your toolbar and just unmute. So if you'd like to unmute and say a quick hello right now, feel free. I'd love to hear your voice. You can just go ahead and unmute. If not, it's okay. Uh, number two, though, I just wanted to go over where you can find that. Number two is the chat box. Use that throughout our workshop today. We will be checking questions in the chat box and answering them. If you would like to save the chat, click on those three dots in the lower right corner. It will say save chat to my computer if you want that as a reference. Now let's get started. So there are some differences between Blackboard Ultra terms and what you may be used to in Blackboard 9.1 or our original Blackboard. So in Blackboard Original, random block and question sets are called question pools. Now a question pool in Blackboard 9.1 is called a question bank in Blackboard Ultra. An item analysis in Blackboard Original is called question analysis. And that password that you may give to students to enter an exam is called access code. So I'll go ahead and circle those one more time. Remember that these are the new terms for the same functions that existed in Blackboard Original. Are there any questions I can answer about these terms? I may do a pop quiz at the end, but yes, remember question pool, question bank, question analysis, and access code. These are all in Blackboard Ultra. You can see the Blackboard original terms on the right side. Now let's go over creating a test and a walkthrough. So I'm going to cover in this section how to create a test or an examination, building and adding those test questions within, applying test settings. I'll go over the different tools and the test settings there. Availability, including conditional availability for our students. And then one of the big questions that we get here at Cal is how to import and export. So I will go over first how to import and export from original to ultra. So if you have an older course, how to use those same test questions and examination questions in ultra, as well as how to copy content easily from ultra to ultra. So let me go ahead and I'll go ahead and share this for you. So first let's talk about creating a test. Now I will go ahead and use my example Blackboard Ultra Essentials course for this walkthrough. So as you can see, this is the Blackboard Ultra Essentials course I'm using for this walkthrough. If I do want to create an exam or a test, I can go ahead and click on the plus sign and create. And you want to click on the assessment section, test. We will go over assignments next week for Blackboard. So if I click on test, that will open up this page where I can rename my test. Now, one of the best practices that you can consider is when you name the test, put the due date as well. So you're not getting all of those questions from students. So for example, I can go over chapter one quiz, do Monday 11, eight at 12 PM. So that way they know that is the due date for this exam. Now let's go over how to build and add those test questions. So in this space, you can build your tests. 
So if I want to build this from scratch, let's say I choose a multiple choice question for this and let's do something easy. What is two plus two? And then I can put the answers one, two, four, three and four. And I'll click on four as my answer. So I can move or edit the points right here. I can make it five points, let's say for this question. And I can also save. Once I have that saved, you'll see that I created that test question right here. You also have this marked by default that says allow students to add content at the end of an assessment. So say that you're asking them to submit something further, they can go ahead and submit that additional content right here in this box with that student preview. So I have this one question quiz that's due Monday 11.8 at 12 p.m. So let me go ahead and change the due date right here under test settings on the right. So I'll go ahead and choose 11.8, which is Monday. And then one of the things is make sure that you're choosing the correct time. I'll put 12 p.m. for this one, not 12 a.m. Allowing class conversations, that means that students are able to ask you questions about the exam. So let's say that something's not working, they can have this little discussion forum to ask questions. You can also randomize the questions and randomize the answers. So the multiple choice will not always appear in the same order. Collect submissions offline because this is an assessment of questions, I cannot do that. I have a grade category right here. I will do that as a test. And attempts allowed, I will, I will say two for this one. Grade using points. And these are all the different grading categories. And Julian will go over those in just a bit as well if you have any questions. Now, anonymous grading is for an exam or some kind of assessment that does not include questions. If you do have any questions about this, please feel free to email us and we can set up an individual consultation with our office hours for that. There's also other evaluation options, two graders per student, as well as peer review. Now I want to scroll down for additional tools. Now right here, I can add a, add a time limit. So I have 60 minutes right here. And I can also enable safe assign if it is a uh, written examination, for example. One more thing, we have lockdown browser dashboard. If you have not set this up, we did a recent workshop on Respondus lockdown browser, but you can click right here. That will walk you through step-by-step -step on how to set this up for either AI automatic proctoring or live proctoring. I'll go ahead and click on save. Now, as you can see, let me choose the due date is the eighth not the seventh. Okay, and then I'll go ahead and save that. So as a best practice, I have written in the title that due date for the examination, as well as the due date is correct on the side of the screen. Now, if I look right here, hidden from students, I can make this visible to students. So right away, they'll be able to see this test and they have until the eighth to finish that. But if I want to set release conditions, I can do that as well. So I'll go ahead and click on release conditions, all members, and you can either set this as date or time or performance. I will choose date and time for this one. So this means it will show on, let's say they can see it starting on the 6th at 12 p.m. And then it will be hidden after, let's say the 8th at 12 p.m. or at 12.05, let's do that. Okay, so now it's showing automatically and hidden after that specific date. Right here, it says, when will content appear? You can choose if you want the content to appear before course members meet the release conditions. So if I put show, my students will be able to see that the exam will be on this date, but they won't be able to see the exact questions on that exam. I'll go ahead and click on save. And there you go. So this release condition I've already set, or you can choose visible to students. And now let me go ahead and exit out of here. So, so far what we've done is we created a quiz. I have to move to turn my lights on. There you go. And I also put the due date for that quiz as well. Now, one of the questions that we get a lot is how do we import from original to ultra as well as ultra to ultra? So let me see, or let me walk you through on how to import from 
original Blackboard. So right here, you, this may look familiar. So here is an original Structure of English course in Blackboard Original. If I scroll down on the left side, I want to choose some exams or tests to copy over into Blackboard Ultra. So remember, this is from original to ultra. If I click on course tools, I will go ahead and scroll down to test surveys and pools. So let me just walk you through that one more time. On the left-hand side, if it's hidden, just go ahead and click on this and scroll down right here where it says course tools. And I will click on test surveys and pools. So this is really one of the easiest ways to copy test over from original to Blackboard Ultra. If I click on tests, you can see all of these tests that have already been created in Blackboard Original that I want to import into Blackboard Ultra. So what I will do is click on this down arrow or the down caret, and then export to local computer. So I'll go ahead and do that right now. So it has downloaded as a zip file on my computer. So now what I will do is I will import this file into my Blackboard Ultra course. So let's go ahead and do that. So here's my Blackboard Ultra course, Blackboard Ultra Essentials. And let me actually hide this since it's not a real test, okay? And I will also click right here. So if I click on the three dots, I want to import content. And let me share my entire screen so you can see this. Okay, so when I click on import course content, I will click right here. And we see right here under my downloads, the test export file that I just did. Let me go ahead and open that. And it will upload this test file from my original course into Blackboard Ultra. It does take a few minutes, so let's see. And once that is finished, that test from my previous original course will import directly into here. So while we wait, are there any questions I can answer from the group or anything I can show again? Yes, I have a huh? question. Yes. This is um, Professor Paris. Yes, hi, um, Dr. Paris. Hi. Um, my question is when it imports and when it finishes the import con course content, does it go to its relevant place? Like for instance, will tests go into tests and will, do you understand my question? Where, where will you find it in, our, you know, you go and you import the information. I understand that. But where will it go? Will it go to where, you know, will it match up sort of? So it won't. So let me show you. That's a great question. So Dr. Paris, if you look here, so it finished. It finished importing that test from my original course. So you have to scroll down with Blackboard Ultra. And do you see where it says undeployed tests? Yes. So if I click on that, then I can see that this final exam has imported. Let me click on that. So you can see that this final exam has imported. It looks, it looks like it imported correctly. So what you can do then is you can move this into the module or the folder where you want to move it. But when you import the test, it'll always be at that bottom part where it says undeployed tests. Okay. Yeah. That was a great question. Thank you, Dr. Paris. Okay, I, I have, um, this is procedure wise. Yes. Are you gonna have a, a, a period at the end for questions? Because I'm not, I have a few questions, but I'm not sure where they fit into your presentation. That particular one fit in. Yes. <laughs> but um, I, I don't wanna, you know, lead you, you know, I don't want you to jump ahead or jump back or whatever. So if there's gonna be an answer and question, a question and answer session, I'll wait. Yeah, that's perfect. I'm glad you brought that up. So we'll have some time at the very end for extended questions. But as we go section by section, the next section that we will do is about question types. If you have any questions after we do the live walkthrough, we can answer those for that topic. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. Harris. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. So I just showed you right now how to import and export from original to ultra. Let's go over how to do it from ultra to ultra. So if I click right here, the same three dots on the screen, and let me go ahead and reshare this for you. Okay. Click on these same three dots. 
Now I want to do copy content. So before we did import content from original to ultra, now let's do copying from ultra to ultra. So I'll click on copy content. And for this one, you, you can see all the courses and organizations I am in charge of or I'm an instructor for. So I will use my ultra sandbox for this example. If I click here and click on course content, I have this Washington history test that I want to copy over from ultra to ultra. So remember this is in my course content. I'm using my ultra sandbox as an example here. Click on course content, Washington history test, and I will copy this selected content. Remember, you can copy multiple things. It, you don't have to do it one by one. Just for this example, I will do one by one. So I will copy this Washington history test. And as you can see right here at the bottom, it is copying over, probably will take a minute or two. But once this is finished, you will also see this test copied over from ultra to ultra. Any questions so far about this as we wait? Hope everyone is staying warm today. It's quite cold. But once this finishes copying over from ultra to ultra, you'll see that content and that quiz saved right here. Could you quickly repeat that process, please? Yes, no problem. Thank Hello, you. Professor Ormond. So Professor Ormond, if you do want to copy content from ultra to ultra, you'll click right here, those three dots. And let me go ahead and make this so you can see. I'm gonna spotlight this. So click on the three dots right here, and then you want to click on copy content. Remember, we're doing this from ultra to ultra. So if I click on copy content, I will be able to see all the courses and organizations that I am teaching in. And I will use my ultra sandbox for this example, course content. And it's the same structure as your other course, but you will just choose whatever test that you want to copy over from ultra to ultra. So if I click right here, I can click on copy selected content. Now, sometimes there is an error copying certain content, but let's double check if everything worked correctly. So I'm going to scroll down and right here where it says undeployed test, you'll see that Washington history test that I just copied over. So if I click on that, I just wanna double check that everything looks correct. Yes, so this five question test did copy over correctly, it looks like. I can also change the due date and the test settings that I went over just a bit earlier. So before we move on, are there any questions I can answer about creating tests? We will have some extra time at the end for extended Q&A, by the way. Okay, looks good. So let's move on to the next section, which is all about question types. Now you may be familiar with most or all of these question types. We will not cover the ones in black. So that's calculated formula, essay, matching, multiple choice, and true and false. But Julian and I will cover reusing questions, fill in the blank and fill in multiple blanks and multiple answers. So if you do have questions about this after our walkthrough, feel free to ask. So let's go ahead and walk through on how to reuse questions in Blackboard. So I will go to my sample quiz that I went over before. And when I want to do a reuse question, click on that plus sign. You'll see these options for all of the question types. We will cover reuse questions right now. So I'll click on that. And now I can reuse questions from different modules, different quizzes that I've, I've already created. So for example, let's do multiple choice, true or false. I'll copy these five questions over. And it's as simple as that. So I'm reusing the questions that I've already done right here and just copying them over. Remember in your test settings, you can go ahead and switch around the order. So if I go under test settings, I can choose randomized questions and randomized answers. So the test does not look the same for every single student. Okay, and I will go ahead and pass it on to Julian. 
and he will walk through on how to do fill in the blank and fill in multiple blanks and multiple answer type of questions. Thank you, Julian. No problem. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? I can hear you. All right. So good afternoon, everyone. Um, David's done a great job kind of showing you all uh, the reused questions in the earlier aspects. I will be focusing on the fill in the blanks and the multiple answer questions. So as you're creating your test, when we talk about multiple, multiple answers and fill in the blank, these are two of our functions that Blackboard Ultra offers. So I'll start with multiple choice. So when you're creating your multiple choice question, it can, no matter what your question is, it gives you the function of selecting one answer or multiple answers for it to be valid for your students. So we can say blue, yellow, I just go basic colors. Great function, you also have about up to 10 answer choices that you can use for your multiple choice questions. So if you wanted to select one answer, that is fine. Maybe you'll say, hey, we want to select two answers. You can see at your scoring options that you have an option of whether you want students to get all, either get all the questions and get all the points or nothing, or allow for partial credit, meaning that if they answer one but not the other, they'll count for about 50% of the specific question. Or you also have the option of subtracting points for incorrect answers. It is all up to your autonomy. I always say allow partial credit um, because that also gives you definitive data about that can drive your instruction and things that you may need to come back on and revisit for your course. So once you've selected your answer, one answer or multiple answers that will be correct, we will go ahead and save that question as well. And that is our multiple choice uh, and or multiple answer type of question. Now I'll be Moving on to our fill in the blank. So as always, we click our plus sign and click add fill in the blank question. Now the fill in the blank is interesting because you essentially are inserting the answers as you're creating your question. So if you're coming up, coming up with a, a question similar to So when you're putting in your answer for fill in the blank, for the answer you want students to give, you have to be very intentional about how, you, how you're typing in your answer. So to type in any answer, we have to put brackets around it. That is how Blackboard reads the question and the answer that goes with the selected question. You'll type in your answer and you'll close your brackets. So if you notice after I've done this, it still won't let me save because it had, you have a couple steps that you have to do to complete this create complete the creation of this question, excuse me. So I've created my question, now I'll head down to next steps. And this is why I say you have to be intentional with your answer because it gives you a couple different options for what you would like to select. Whether you want students response to be an exact match of what our answer is, whether it contains a match or maybe matches a pattern. For learning purposes, I will say either contain a match or exact match would be your two best options. And then, like we said, being intentional, is it something that is case sensitive? For certain courses, we understand things may be proper nouns or people. So you have to also delegate whether that's something you want to include as well. But once you have done those, once you have done that and have reassured that I don't need this to be case sensitive, I want this to be an exact match, then I go ahead and save my save my question. So that is that kind of covers our multiple answers and fill in the blank. Um, do I have any questions specifically on these two question functions? All right, thank you. So next we we'll, next we we'll move on, excuse me, my voice is kind of going in and out today. Next we'll move on to grading. So what does it look like when my students submit the test? How does that look on my end? So we'll get out of here 
and I have one already queued up for us. Excuse me, gotta move my Zoom box. So I see I have a submission when I click on my test that I've already administered. I'll go ahead and click on my submission. Now this test was fill in the blank and multiple answers. So Blackboard automatically graded it for me. But what if I wanna go, I wanna go back through, see what, how my students did. So I'll click on the students complete. Excuse me, move the zoom box again. So now I see what my students test submission looks like. And this is why we talk about that partial credit that I created a fill in the blank question. And if the answers aren't exactly where they need to be for fill in the blanks, they will be marked as wrong. So if you notice my answers still match, but they're not in the exact places. If they're not in the exact places, they will be marked as wrong answers. So you will only receive, your students will only receive partial credit. And it even shows you with the green and red line, the red line indicates that the student answered these questions wrong. This was a student response. The green line indicates that this, question, that this answer was placed in the right place and it's the correct answer. And that is for my fill in the blank question. I also, I also administered a multiple answer question. I wanted to see what that would look like. So here's my question, multiple answer. As you can note, my correct answers are here. This the student selected one correct answer and one incorrect answer. So you notice it still gives that partial credit because there are three, three possible answers. One out of three is 0.3.33 percent, and it indicates which it indicates which ones are the correct answers and where your student selected the incorrect answer. And the great part about this is, like I said, Blackboard grades all of these questions sufficiently, so you can really go through and examine where your students messed up at for, for your data purposes to drive your instruction. So as we kind of shift towards that, so now that I see how my student has done, now I want to I wanna give feedback. I, I have to give feedback to my student to allow them to know how they, where they need to grow at. So we'll always see our feedback button over here, our feedback station, so we call it. And this provides you the option to create a video recording of feedback, an audio recording of feedback, or your general text feedback. We recommend as just best practices for learning design that you leave a recorded feedback. I think recorded feedback just, it engages your students more. It, it really, it really deepens their, deepens their learning and kind of connects you more on a personal level for your students, which is what we all strive to do. So to access that, we want to click on our insert content button over here on the right. When we click on our insert content button, you see it offers you multiple formats of, its, of things you can add. You can add an attachment if you already have a Word document. But to do our audio or visual recording, we want to come down here to recording. And when you click on that, if you can still see my screen, my camera will not be able to open up, but my audio is, and it'll, it gives me the opportunity to start recording and leave a select recording for feedback for students. Once again, moving zone box. Once I've completed that recording, I'll make sure to click save so that it attaches to our necessary document. So um, while I'm here, do I have any questions about how that test submission looks for these specific questions? How to administer feedback, whether it's text, video, or audio? Um, do I have any questions about any of those uh, specific content at this moment? Uh, Mr. Julian, I, I I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. I was wondering that uh, uh, for this, you know, the feedback we can do, we can send it to indi uh, for individual student or for the whole class. Am I right? 
Yeah, so when we're so when we're talking about this specific feedback, this is for the individual student. Okay, okay. Okay. All right. I have a question concerning grades and stuff, but I, I don't know if this is the appropriate place. Okay. Uh, let me ask it and then you can push me later or yeah, answer. I, it. I, absolutely. Feel free to ask. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. Students are not seeing their grades though indicating that they completed the quiz. So that's, I, I'm having a problem with the grade book in that sense. I don't know if this fits in at this point in time or not. So um, I'm kind of the grade book specialist here. So after this session, mm -hmm. um, if you wouldn't mind sending me an email and we can we can have a consultation and I can kind of work with, work with you through some of those issues that you're having with the grade book so we can resolve that immediately. You, pro you, you promise me? <laughs> I promise you, you, you have my word. So, okay. So please just send me an email and I know after this session, um, within this week, I can meet with you and we can resolve Oh, now, now you moved it to within this week. <laughs> it's all right. We, we, we will get up, but no, we'll, absolutely. We'll, just, we'll get to it. Okay. I appreciate it, sir. No problem. Just send me an email. Thank you. Um, so moving forward from this next part, we're talking about student, well, let me fit, add one more piece to this before um before I get to student accommodations. So when you're creating a test, and this is, I, I kind of missed out on this, but just the way it's structured, it kind of, this is where it hit me. Um, when you're creating a test for students, and I come back to this test that I created, you have an option at the bottom that allows students to add additional content, whether it's text, images, files, that may be related, may not be related for this function, may not be related, it is up to you. Now, this function is automatically, by default, it's always on. And I think it's a great function if students struggle through a test or have any notes about the test that they want to leave for you. This is a great place for them to add those notes. So just best practice, we just, we just advise that we would leave this section on. Just so your students, if they have any feedback or any additional comments about the quiz or assessment, they have an option to leave those for you. And that is always going to be at the bottom of your exam. You can't type in it when you're creating a test, but when students finish a test or they get to the bottom of it, they will see this box where they can add that additional content. So kind of shifting gears, we're going to talk about student accommodation and how, to, and how that plays into your exams and your assessments. So you can reach a student accommodation in two areas. You can find it in your grade book, under your student list or under your roster. I will walk you through both way, both places of finding them. We'll start at our roster because I'm already on the page. So when I click on my student roster, I can find a specific student. I'll choose Fatma's face. Um, and when you click the ellipsis beside the student, you'll see accommodations. If we go ahead and click on accommodations, the two accommodations right now that Blackboard Ultra currently support is a due date accommodation and your time limit accommodation. So if, I give, if I'm giving an assessment that is 60 minutes, but I know that certain students need more time on these assessments, I can go ahead and click on that time limit accommodation. And I can choose to give them 50% extra time, which would be 30 minutes based on 60 minute quiz, 100% extra time, which would be two hours in the 60 minute scale or unlimited time. You know, this is kind of based on your accommodations. We can't tell you which ones to select, um, but just be diligent with the students that need accommodation and how you're going to accommodate them as far as the time limit. Also, when you talk about due date, this allows students to never have their work marked late. So for certain students that just may need more additional time in general outside of the time limit, when you click this, when you click that due date accommodation, instead of it, providing maybe an automatic zero, like some great, like some assignments do in the grade book, or having it come up red as student completed it late, it will not do that for this specific student. And once again, these are, these are just accommodations that we can't tell you which ones specifically use. You kind of have to do that based on the accommodations of your own specific students. And we'll close that. 
And that's the that's one place to find your accommodation. I, I say it's the easiest spot is within your roster. But say I'm not on my roster, I'm going somewhere else. When you come to your grade book and you find your list of students, if you go to a student, if you go to that specific student, I'll go back to train 14 and click the ellipsis on this side, you also ha have the ability to pull up those accommodations. So you have two places to pull it up in your roster and, and on your grade book list for students. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Julian, where did you, from where did you go to the roster? I missed that part. Okay, no problem. So uh, just, I'll, and I'll go ahead and just recap that very quickly. Um, so the two places we find it is in our grade book. When we click on our students' names in grade book, I can go to a specific student, click on this ellipsis, and go to the accommodations. Now, if we're talking about roster, if, if I'm doing it from my roster page, that is on my content, my course content page. And you'll notice under your details and actions, you'll see your roster, you everyone in your course. Okay, okay, I got it, thank you. Absolutely. Um, and once you click there, you'll click the ellipsis beside a student's name and you'll be able to, you'll be able to do the same whether for your accommodations. So one of the last things I think we wanted to kind of talk about was this analysis, your test analysis for your students. And excuse me one second, I'm gonna pull out of here and go to a different course so I can show you what that looks like in meaningful data. Well, I can go there now. So first, when you're talking, when you're trying to find your question, question analysis, for your assessments, we want to come over here to our analytics. Every course has this has this button function. When you're coming to your analytics, we'll find our specific quiz that we want to run a report on. If you notice, if you have not ran a report, you can't click on any of these assignments. Yet. So first, we want to click run a report. When you click that, it will tell you that your report is in progress. And once you click that, the hyperlink for your specific assessment will come up. That now gives you access to the analytics of your assessment. So if I go ahead and click on this, it, this provides me a couple of different aspects of data that are very useful and some that we're still trying to tweak to figure out the best use for it. Um, first thing, it provides you the average score. So what is the average score of my assessment? based on all of my students. Possible questions on the assessment and completed attempts and the average time spent on this assessment. So I think this is also valuable when you're talking about providing those 60 minute quizzes and you wanna know, hey, did everybody take the full allotted time? Did people, excuse me, did people take 30 minutes, 40 minutes? Those are things to consider. Under that, you want, I think another big aspect of that is the difficulty. And that indicates the percentage of students who answered your questions correctly. So some, some questions may seem easy because everybody got them right. That's not necessarily a bad thing. We're just, that's just how the system is reading it is that, okay, 100% of these students got this question correct. So by chance, this may seem like an easy question in terms of difficulty versus questions that less students got correct may go to medium and then hard based on the percentages. So as you scroll down, it gives you all of the questions that you provided in that quiz. And if you notice, it also still adds the difficulty, your graded attempts, the type of question it is, and whether it needs review. Needing review just may mean, hey, come look at the, needing review may mean come look at this data to see if your question may be too easy. And like I said, that's not always a bad thing. It just depends on what your learning outcomes and learning objectives are for the course. So I'll click on this question that has a 96% difficulty, which means that somebody got it wrong or gave a correct, an incorrect answer for this quiz. So it allows you to click on the selected question and then it gives you that overall, the overall read for that question as well. 
the average score for that question, your level of difficulty. Outlines your number of responses, so how many students responded to each specific answer. You see, this is where we find that 96% difficulty, somebody selected an incorrect answer. So I think, I think the analytics piece is great when you're looking at specific data, just drive your instruction when you're talking about specific data to see how your students did, what concepts do you think they got based on the questions, what things do you think you may need to reteach or revisit when you come back to your next uh, class session. And it gives you the option to go ahead and scroll through all of your questions, whether it's by the sidebar or our top piece up here. And one great thing about all this, it is down, it's downloadable. So, hey, I may not want to see this now, or hey, I may want to take this to my dean at a later time. I can go ahead and click this arrow into the box, and it downloads into an Excel spreadsheet. Something that you can use going forward or in a meeting or anything of that nature. And I think... I think we have pretty much covered our analytics piece. Um, do I have any questions about that while I'm on this? Uh, yeah, I have a question. Yes. Can you hear me? Okay, this is uh, Keith Paris. Um, when um, are you able to download, like for instance, what I do is I put my stuff on a spreadsheet and I analyze you know, um, you know, that's how I come up with a grade for the class because I include grade for class participation and attendance also. Am I able to download? I, I know in Blackboard, the original Blackboard, I was able to, but can I download specific quiz information onto like a spreadsheet? What I, what I mean is I want all my, my students and their scores on a particular quiz on a spreadsheet. So in the gradebook, it does allow you to download specific specific things from um, specific grading columns. Right. Um, and I could talk with you more about that, but just kind of a quick overview. Uh, if you would go to gradebook, mm -hmm. it does allow you to download download certain aspects of it. Just change, just have to change your view, but it does allow you to filter and download certain aspects of what you may be looking for when you're trying to assess students and. When we meet later, when we meet this week, not in, later in the week, when we meet this week, I got you. When we meet this week, I can walk you through some of those features as well and kind of get you caught up with the Blackboard Ultra Gradebook. You see, Dr. Serna is laughing because he's had he's had to deal with me before. <laughs> it's, it's all right. We we love all the faculty and we our job is just trying to make sure we make this as easy. As I, I know, and you guys do a fantastic job. And Dr. When Paris, it's always been a pleasure. So when, when, I, can catch, when I can catch up with you. <laughs> yes, Absolutely. see, we love that. Absolutely. So okay. I'm going to transition this back to my colleague, David Serna. Um, and thank y'all for allowing me to speak. And thank you so much, Julian. That was great. Uh, Julian is definitely our grade book whiz. So I have put his information in the chat box. It's julian.king at udc.edu. Now, before we conclude our presentation today, just some considerations for you as you work more with Blackboard tests. Number one, you can add test questions to pools for easy reuse and expansion. That can save a lot of time. I'll go over quickly how to create that test pool in a test. You can also create tests from question pools from a textbook publisher. So what I mean by that is if you have a specific textbook publisher that you're using, you're able to download a test bank from them. So a series of test questions, and then you can upload those into Blackboard. So I don't have a specific test bank available for myself, but I can show you how to do this. So if you're on your Blackboard website, let me just share my screen for this. You can go ahead and see in the lower left corner, it says manage banks. And then this is where you can import test banks, let's say from a publisher. I can go ahead and click on the plus sign in the right corner. I have that test bank downloaded and I can upload it so I can start using those questions. So those are already written or already written by a textbook publisher that can save you a lot of time. 
Now let's go over doing a question pool in an actual test or exam. So if I click on my sample test again that I showed you earlier, let's talk about a question pool. Now question pools are really cool because that rhymed, um, because you can go ahead and reuse questions. And then you can have different questions for all of your students. So if I click on the plus sign, I'll go to add question pool. It's the first one. And remember, I have all these questions that I could reuse from previous modules or even other courses. If I click on, let's say, these four, and I'll do add questions. Now, in the question pool, let's say I only want the students to view two of those randomly. So I'll go ahead and put number two there, and I'll click on save. So only two of the four questions in this pool are displayed randomly to students. So let's say that students are trying to get get a little bit of ahead and they're trying to work together on a test. Now they have different test questions. So that question pool can be super, super helpful. You don't have to do this manually. That's already set up right here, question pool and viewing the questions. Are there any questions about the question pool? I, I wasn't aware that, that students were allowed to see the question pool. Yeah, they can see. So if it's a question pool, if I take from four questions, they'll only see two random questions from that question pool. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's a way that not every student has the exact same exam. Thank you, Dr. Paris. Any questions about that okay. question pool? Mm -hmm. Excellent. So next steps, um, we just want to do a quick poll in the chat box. Please tell us in the chat box, what do you want the next webinar to focus on? It could be anything about Blackboard, Blackboard tests, but just let us know in that chat box. It'll give us a good idea of what to do for next time. Or you can go ahead and unmute if you have any ideas you'd like to bounce off of us. Yes, when you are given a final and you want to do lockdown, I, I would like for someone to review that maybe on one of the one of your uh, webinars. Yes, so Professor Ormond, we did a recent Respondus Lockdown Browser webinar. I will send you an email okay. with, with the details and the resources for that. And if thank you'd you. like to set up a consultation with me, I'd be more than happy to. All right, thank you very much. You are welcome. Let me go ahead and actually put all of our details in the chat box for everyone here. And let me just run through some of these links. So first we have Julian and I, if you have any specific questions about anything that we cover today, feel free to ask either of us. So julian.king at udc.edu. My name is David Cerna, david.cerna at udc.edu. Next week, we have another great webinar on November 9th from 12.30 to 1.30. 1 it's all about assignments in Blackboard Ultra. So if you click on that link, you're able to sign up directly with us. Two more, we have our professional development calendar. And if you'd like to sign up for office hours, Julian and I do those office hours every single week. So you can go ahead and click on that third link, UDC slash Cal professional development and Cal Blackboard resources. So if you have specific questions about Blackboard or you want to watch some of the walkthrough videos that we have, go ahead and click on that link from our website. Uh, I have one question, uh, sorry. Yes, of course. Oh, yeah, sorry. of course. Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, <clears throat> suppose, you know, whenever whenever I am done with the, I have, basically I have two questions. Whenever I am uh, done with the test, okay? And before the final, because on, on my, you know, the course, there is the final test is accumulative. So what does it mean that the student need to review their, you know, all old question? So what is the, you know, I just want to know how I can display the whole question. Like the, my, you know, suppose I'm right now I'm doing test four, by, uh, but I just want to make open test one for the, for, the, for the student, you know, so they can see all the options. Um, so I, I will speak to that very quickly. Um, I think there are some ways, but I would, if we could, could we please meet about that offline? Uh, those are some things that I think we can, we can definitely, um, resolve and troubleshoot together and kind of figure out the best way to create that kind of cumulative, that cumulative outline for all of your students prior to the final. 
Okay, okay. Thank you. Any other questions we can answer? Dr. Uh, Paris? I, um, I, <laughs> The, the thing about it is that um, Dr. Ken kindly reached out to me already. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm happily surprised, but I am leaving shortly to go and I, I need to get a quick answer with respect to why I'm not seeing my stuff in Gradebook because mm -hmm. um, my, my students are, are bugging me. They're telling me they, they're not seeing their grades though it indicates that they completed the quiz. Like for instance, they would have a quiz and, and, and it indicate they even get what is called, a, I think it's a receipt or an email or something showing that they did the quiz, but it does not appear in their grade book. However, you, however my grade book would, in, would show the grades for those quizzes. If you could, uh, Dr. Parrish, the email I just sent you, if you wouldn't mind clicking my WebEx link in my signature, I'm happy to do an impromptu meeting with you right now and try to resolve that issue. I'm going to have to put you in my will. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you. And what about me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you already there. You've helped me. Are you? You're already there. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor Paris. Yeah. Great questions. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. I had. I had another question. Yes. I'm, so, I'm sorry. You know. No problem. So sometimes you know what happened that. Uh, normally I, I put just, you know, one attempt for, for each, you know, the, mm. the test. So sometimes what happened that one or, one or two students had for, for, you know, for some technical issues, you know, the Blackboard uh, record that they already attempted, All, although, you know, they didn't do, they didn't take the test. The problem, you know, whenever the next time, whenever I try to set up the test for that particular student, I have to change the attempt number that I have to go for two because, other, because otherwise Blackboard won't let him to take the test. But the problem, you know, if, if, if there are another two or three students, you know, has didn't take the test, you know, I cannot, I cannot change this. I cannot re revert it to my original, you know, one attempt. Okay, so I think um, for this issue, uh, think about using Respondus Lockdown Browser just to double check that those technical issues are actually happening. Um, please send either me or Julian an email so we can work on this one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, okay. Yeah, just thank to double you, thank check. You. Thank you, thank you for attending. Any final questions before we conclude? You're on mute on this side. Okay, so I think that was Dr. Paris. But yes, everyone, thank you so much for attending today. We hope that we were able to answer some of your questions and do a run through. All of our workshop sessions are recorded and you can find those on, on our YouTube channel. If you also look at the Blackboard banner page, right, uh, the very first one, you'll also see that link to watch our YouTube recordings. So I will upload this within 48 hours. So that will be on our YouTube channel. You are welcome. Thank you so much, Palash or Dr. Palash. Any final questions? Well, everyone, it has been a pleasure. My name again is David Serna. I wanna thank my colleague, Julian King, as well as Fatma for joining us today. This has been a pleasure. If you do want some more resources about Respondus Lockdown Browser or just want to set up a walkthrough with me, please send me an email, david.serna at udc.edu. Professor Ormond, I will send you an email after this with some of the resources so we can get started, right? So thank you again, everyone. Please stay safe, stay warm, and I will see you again very soon. Bye-bye.